Well, I wait for the phone to stabilize. Uh, sometimes it's not always the phone that needs stabilization. It's myself. <laughs> anyway, it's 13 hours and 26 minutes into the day of Wednesday, December 23rd. I almost said 26th. <laughs> It's not after Christmas. It's uh, two days before Christmas. So we're, in terms of Vlogmas, we're still within the Vlogmas, the, t the, the typical Vlogmas uh, uh, within the Vlogmas uh, period. However, Vlogmas, because uh, of the second Christmas, the old, what, what, what people refer to as old Christmas, particularly if you're English or you're American, uh, you have that second old Christmas. And then you have the 12 days of Christmas on top of the old Christmas, so it's uh, the 7th to the 19th, that's the 12 days of Christmas. So we still have... Uh, at least another month of Christmas left to go, left, uh, no, 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 yeah, of Christmas, and then that means uh, we have that much time in terms of uh, Vlogmas, so uh, Vlogmas itself, uh, particularly if you're a Christmas person, uh, uh, will last that long, people, you know, tend to be quick about things, but uh, if you're a Christmas person and let you love Christmas, and so want an excuse to keep your uh, uh, decorations up and by all means do keep them up until February 1st because uh, you give yourself a cool down period down for the 19th of uh, January uh, you know give yourself a little bit of lag time to take down everything and uh, that'll be February 1st where things start coming down and uh, then we start getting ready for uh, basically uh, what everyone else knows is Easter, but uh, the Eastern Christians understand know it as Pascha or Passover. If you know anyone named Pasquale, you know that's where Pasquale gets the name from. It's from the name Pasquale comes from the uh, uh, the word Pascha. <clears throat> I'm still <laughs> kind of waking up. I don't, I don't think I'm going to fully wake up, because uh, Wednesday is supposed to be my day off, where uh, I spend most of the time on expedition out in the other realm. Uh, and the thing is, is that in the other realm, in the, in the other world, you know, it's kind of what it's like, particularly if you're a lucid if you're a lucid dreamer, then it, it, it is another world, it is another uh, form of existence. And you get another form of experience. So what happens is that the, the opportunities to do research or, or be on expedition out there uh, it, it is significant. And uh, there is a physiology to understand, a physiology to sort of uh, the study, a, a mechanism and a function, see how the body, fun the physical body functions during... That period, you have, uh, as I said, when I'm around like this and I'm spending most of my time here uh, having this discussion, I end up yawning a lot. When I'm out in the fresh air on the scooter, no yawning at all. It has something to do with the quality of air compared to the indoor air and the outdoor air. That really sort of uh, brings out the, uh, the the mechanism of uh, yawning, which in some ways is a deep breath, but it's it, it's more than simply a deep breath. It's also a sort of, if you will, a relaxation of the muscles. It's, it's sort of a uh, known as a re relaxation reflex in terms of its physiology, because that's where you feel most relaxed. That's when you start feeling. Uh, in many ways, lethargic, but, but, oh, I 
It does interrupt a lot of functions. But at that time, you're not feeling lethargic. It's, it's sort of like there's something going through your body that, that just causes it to sort of just... deep breath and just sort of... Uh, it, and you feel it in the muscles. You feel it not just in the jaw, but all over that, that the yawn is coming on. And there is, in many ways, we we'll call it a, a, a feeling of... of, of, uh, of relaxation in terms of the tension seems to just melt away. And I guess it's kind of a good thing because you can't always be tense. You can't... You, you, the anxiety that you have... And anxiety never goes away. It, it, you, it, it's there at various different levels. Sometimes it's there significantly. Sometimes it's not there, not there at all. Um, it just really depends on how you function during the day. Uh, that sort of kind of that kind of determines how your your body responds to the anxiety, and, and maybe in many cases that as we're having the discussion and as we're having the discussion and conversation here, that uh, I'm feeling more relaxed, and as I start feeling more relaxed, that's the uh, time to yawn. That's the, you know, it pulls back the anxiety. Uh, that you would typically feel in having this conversation or doing the vlog. I mean, people get very nervous when the camera goes on, but they don't know what to say. It, it, it is a difficult thing to be a vlogger because you have to keep the conversation going. And, you know, someone points out, well, in some of your vlogs, it's just... There's nothing there. You're kind of jumping all over the place. And Well, that's the way it is because in certain cases, because a vlog is a reality show, you're not... Uh, uh, seeing me always at my best, it's not edited for that. The vlog is edited to be real. It's 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 it's, it's, a, it's a reality show. Uh, particularly if you like, con if you're a person who likes conversation, who thinks conversation is the entertainment, uh, that a vlog, particularly like this, is something that's worthwhile uh, because you have that conversation there. You have uh, the you, you know in many ways, a social factor that you typically don't get with entertainment shows. Entertainment shows that they're simply for amusement, that to, to entertain you. But they're not there as, in many ways, as a social aspect of things. And this is what a lot of people, uh, during this, our, our, our jail time, uh, when we were on lockdown, as in, in, this is a prison term, lockdown is a prison term, prison term, uh, many people are feeling stressed out. Why? Because they don't have the social component. And they want to go out, they want to do something social. And the thing is, the social thing is kind of a perusal type of thing. It's like uh, an older person would, the way someone would get on TikTok or Instagram and scroll around, uh, a lot of the Mediterraneans, particularly the Greeks, the Italians, uh, even the people from the Middle East, they won't scroll around on TikTok, they won't scroll around on Instagram. What they'll do is they'll go out to a cafe they know and see who's there. And if enough people are there, they stay at the cafe, they have a coffee, they have a dessert. Now, it's not there to go to necessarily to eat, but, but you go there for the conversation, for the social experience. And this is the nature of the cafe. Or in Greek, it's, the cafe, it's known as the kafaniu. That social interaction can be done in a vlog. If a person is more of a digital type of person or, you know, has that type of digital existence, and that's how you approach it. And so people in lockdown today who are typically going, would, would instead of scrolling on their scrolling on TikTok or an Instagram or Facebook or whatever, uh, who were used to going out to the Cafe Neo, they're having a very difficult time because the socialization isn't necessarily, necessarily there. Excuse me. I had a bit of the hiccups there. But a vlog does that. It replaces the conversation. It replaces the socialization. Uh, it, in terms of if it's not there... If it is there, that you can add this in as part of your conversation. You can bring this in as information, as something you're learning. Because the conversation can have, can have a good degree of substance into it. 
some people get on here and instead of just having the conversation, they rant. They, they complain about something and it ends up being, oh, that was a five, six minute rant, waste of time, you know. There's uh, ten minutes of my life I'll never get back again and that's their response to things. And so what happens is that, the, the, is that blogs are part of this reality. They're, they're, they're part of the person's life. And you can see how the background has changed, uh, there's new equipment coming in, a new uh, sort of decor, if you will, for, for other equipment that came in. I mean, the, the laptop wasn't there before. You saw in earlier vlogs, you saw the laptop was there, but it was off. Now it's on. And I think so. I still do have. I still have a number, a, a, a certain amount of work left to do. Uh, but that's all right. It's all right to have it like that, because this is part of progress. Progress doesn't happen immediately. It happens over a period of time. Anyways, uh, I think I'm going to leave that here for now because uh, I do have some meditation and some gaming to do, and then I am going to go back to bed. There's the bus. Well, I awoke to the sound of hello, hello. And it was a delivery, so we've got a package opening to end the vlog for Tuesday. So it is uh, actually 11 hours into the day of Thursday, uh, December 24th, uh, and this is uh, Christmas Eve, uh, 2020. <sighs> So let's get to the package. It's a package that I wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting until until January. So here's the package here. Of course, you can tell by the smile that it's uh, from Amazon. An Amazon package. And there's enough leverage that I can open it, but without a, without scissors, so it can open pretty easily. And it is another pair of writing pants. So I like the, uh, the I like the first pair very much. They work very well. So I uh, got a second. Hair, because you always need uh, you always need a, a, a second pair. Or something you know, having one pair is not not necessarily a good thing. So I got a second pair. And that's the package opening. The thing is, it was it was scheduled. It wasn't scheduled to come in. Uh, until, <clears throat> until well into January, so, but, so that's a present, a, a pleasant surprise that it came in early, uh, and completes the, uh, the order I had put into Amazon a while ago. Uh, sorry about the yawning. <coughs> uh, once again, um, <clears throat> Bizarre dreams. A lot of times, to describe the dream is what if it. Nah. There you go, fumbling over words again. Did you try to get the words out, but they don't come? When you try to describe a dream, it's often difficult because the contents of the dreams themselves are not necessarily <clears throat> straightforward. And there's also, in many cases, uh, there in the dream itself, there are some extremely personal issues uh, that you may not wish to share. But can, but you can share the overall feeling, the overall emotion as to the content of the dream as well. You know. As, was it something you were afraid of? Something uh, that terrified you? Something that 
uh, was extremely emotional in terms of being upset. Because uh, there are the, the dreams don't have to be terrifying. They don't have to be a horror show. That could be something uh, with the death of a parent, the death of a child. That you know, it, it, these are things that can present themselves. So the the death of somebody uh, that you love within the dream, well, isn't necessarily horrifying in terms of. You know, like your horror show, like that, that somebody is coming up, like the, you, a monster is chasing you. But rather, it's something that is extremely emotional. And pushes a lot of emotional triggers. Uh, and... The bizarre thing is, is that they come in, in, in... They come, for me anyways... Not necessarily as predictions, but rather as when someone I know dies. That's when I'll have I'll typically have some of these dreams. Uh, I know somebody who 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 is going to be dying. You know, the, 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 it, without being told, I'll start having these death dreams. And then later on, I'll find out that somebody has died while I was having those death dreams. And the thing is, the dreams are indeed emotional, but the thing is, is that my reaction while I'm awake is fundamentally different than from what I am, what, what, it, what I would be if I were, if, if I were, uh, if I were asleep. The, the, the emotions don't surface when I'm awake. The emotions that, uh, that I should have had, and maybe, or maybe not necessarily should have had, but that it should have felt anyway. Uh, don't present themselves while I'm awake. They present themselves while I'm asleep, uh, within the dreams, and that's where particularly you deal with these emotions. And and, and again, it's 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 not an issue of uh, the fear of death. And it's the for me, it's the issue that you're not going to see them. Again, they're leaving for 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 an indefinite period that you don't know where they're going to be. You don't know how to reach them, how to how to contact them, and there's going to be a disconnect. And that's the issue. It's not necessarily an issue that that, that oh they're dying or, or or that they're dead. And the thing is, in the case of of a person dying, and a lot of times it's simply it, these are medical issues that that you know. Uh, that you're presented with, you know, someone's being taken to the hospital, someone's been injured, uh, things like that. If you don't like to see the person in pain, you're, you're a prayer, if you're a type of person who doesn't like to see people in pain, you 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 have an emotional attachment to it in terms of uh, this is not something that's pleasurable to you. There are people who are indeed sadistic, and I don't know what their dreams are, but they could be someone who enjoys this particular type of thing. Uh, there are people who are like that, but I'm not one of them. I mean, even when it came to Forrest Gump, which a lot of people took as a comedy, and every, everyone in the theater was laughing. Because I had seen how people live with particular disorders, who who the disorders create them in such a manner, or or or, or construct them, because the, the disorder does does indeed affect how you live. It it, it constructs you to a, a certain degree. that they are isolated from society. And we don't necessarily understand, most people from the outside don't understand how isolated they are, how isolated they feel. Like I saw someone, uh, this was years ago on the bus, when I used to take the, the bus to different places. Uh, and he was a person like Forrest Gump, 
in terms of his his disorder. And no one wanted to sit next to the guy. He sat down and everyone else got up and moved away. And he had a meltdown. He just was tired. This, this, this is something that's with you. These, dis these disabilities don't leave. And imagine dealing with, it, with your whatever disability you have. In my case, I have a neurological disorder that causes uh, extreme in intestinal discomfort after I, I eat anything. And I always have to make sure, that because of the way I get sick with it, uh, that there's always a bathroom around. This is one of the reasons why I stopped taking the bus. Uh, is that you're on the bus, you're on, you're out someplace. If you don't have access, immediate access to the bathroom, there is, you know, there isn't an immediate access to a bathroom. Uh, that begins to stress you, and that stress of not having a bathroom just in case becomes a significant problem. And, it, and the thing is, what makes it even worse is that there, you, you, you have that sense you don't have the access. And that anxiety of not having the access makes it worse. So I understand, you know, this is something I've been dealing with all my life. You go to an a, a, a amusement park. Everyone goes out to an amusement park. You know, the vlogs and watching the Tannerites and everybody. Else. They're all, uh, you know, there's a Yahweh vlog. Um, um, five family vlogs. They go out to these theme parks. They go out to these these uh, amusements where there isn't a bathroom immediate. In other words, they're not planning to go when they go out. They're not planning to go to the bathroom. They don't have to plan where their next bathroom stop is going to be. I have to do that. I have, and I've done that from a kid as a kid. And when I'm out, I have to make sure because there are, in many cases, if there isn't an immediate access to a bathroom, I don't eat. I will, I'll wait till I wait to eat to get to get till I get back to my place again. Back home. And I've done this since a kid as a, as a from from a child on I've done this. And you see everybody eating, you want to eat. The food smells great, but you can't eat. And so the person on the bus who lived with this stuff his whole life can't, is starting to melt down. It, it is the, the emotion to sort of get so this is the point where he's had too much. And but the people around him don't understand this. They don't understand how the person's feeling. And it's difficult to see a person like that. It's, it's difficult to see a person who is in that type of pain. This is not something that's amusing, this is not something that's funny, but yet, when you look at Forrest Gump, and you watch people, you have people walk to the movie, this is what they assumed. The, 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 the disorders that he had as Forrest Gump is what made the comedy. Or what many people assume to be the comedy. But from one person's perspective, depending on who, how you've experienced things, It could either be a comedy or it could be something that's very serious. And I found it... I found the, the movie Forrest Gump very... From my perspective, from, from, from the way I felt in terms of my emotion, I found it very disturbing. I felt sorry that, that you, had, you had someone who had to live with such... Well, was the only way, a shit life. He went through it okay. But I said I've seen I've seen people who have these disorders who are a lot like Forrest Gump and, and they have their moments where they melt down. It's not always happy. There's not always uh, something that they can handle. Yet we tend to have this as our our entertainment, as our amusement, and people get offended when I say. You don't realize that 9/11 was an, was an entertainment exercise. So what do you mean that was horrible? Yeah, but people enjoyed it. CNN, CNN, and the news, the news channels 
That's what made CNN. It was 9-11. They, everyone was watching CNN. And it made the anchors stars. And that's because we endured to be scared. We endured to be horrified. We, we, and our part of our amusement is, is, is playing with our emotions. And the thing is, is that sitting from our, our living room on the TV or wherever we were watching the TV, this is exactly what 9-11 did. But it's an indication, as to, it tells us how people view other people's uh, 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 pains because they're not necessarily viewing it as such. They're taking it from, an, uh, from, a, from, a, from a perspective of an audience, that they're watching this. And it's historic. This is what the Roman circuses were like this. The Roman circuses were people in an audience watching somebody else's pain. The more pain they were in, the more they were attacked by an animal or whatever, the louder the crowd got. They were very excited about this. Our hockey games are like that. These are the blood sports. And, but the thing is, this is an indication of where society is. And why we have the situation in our society that we do. And so this, but the thing is, these can all be understood within the dreams. This is not necessarily fortune telling. 